Today it's time for an experiment, and hopefully it's not to my detriment. We're going to have some controversial weather as we talk about studded leather. We're hitting the studs and it's deflecting a bit, but it's still cutting into the leather a bit, so I've got a cut on it. Mm. Hello everyone, Lauren back with you, and uh, really quick, I just want to say thank you because we're now at 275 subscribers. We're, we're climbing, little steps, but good steps. Um, I'm thankful for all your support. I am thrilled that you enjoy the videos and that you are subscribing and giving likes and that's just, this is really good all right on to today's subject um studded leather now hopefully i will cut in some of the experiment footage but what i want to talk about today is what studded leather should be like um because we see this and this automatically means armor that's what we think but is this actually good armor? Well, in this pattern, not so much. I and mean, we don't have historical examples of studded armor. Uh, we do have brigandines and coats of plates. We have things where there are riveted, riveted metal plates, like this splint bracer that I made a few years ago. And if the plates are on the inside, the rivets on the outside make it look like there are metal studs on it. And we go, oh, look, yeah, it's studded. That must be protection. But just because we see it looks like stud in the artwork. What it is, is it's either fabric or leather with metal plates on the inside, and they're riveted through, and we can see these patterns of, of rivets. And there are other videos that have talked about this. And can we say there's no such thing as studded leather? Well, there are a few examples of things that look like studded leather, but they look like this. This takes quite the abuse. So I've done some experiments. Um, I didn't like the original take of the video, so I'm just redoing the video. I've done some experiments and it's what happens is when I'm using the messer to cut the leather, I'm getting more impact across the rows of studs, the sword can't get through, and or it's bouncing in between the cuts. Now it's a thicker piece of leather, but if you had thick thicker leather with metal studs on it in rows, that could be effective. And so the two or three examples we have, and I'll try and include a photo at the end of the video, um, if I can find it again. It's tough to search for things because you get a lot of fantasy armor. You get a lot of cool looking LARP gear. And I mean, hey, you know, LARP is about representation of what your armor looks like for the value. That That's great. But for video games and role playing games, we have studded leather and it's just a thin piece of leather with metal studs on it. It takes quite the abuse. Um, I'm dented, I've cut, I've scored into it, where the sword bounces off, I've got cuts in it, and so hopefully, you know, uh, thrusts go right through, right? Studded leather is not very good against thrusting weapons, no. So the conclusion of the experiments and the footage that you've seen, uh, what do we have when we talk about studded leather? Can it be effective? And the answer is, in rows like this, rows of studs could work. I can see how that can work. That's the controversial topic. When we have them in alternating patterns like this, less effective. So just a thin piece of leather with metal studs to reinforce it, it doesn't, doesn't actually work. If you had thick leather with rows of metal studs in them, that could work as an armor. But here's where we get to the, well, well, then why don't we see examples of it? Because you'd probably be easier and quicker <laughs> to just forge out thin metal bars or plates and rivet them on. So when we get to the 14th century, we see the coat of plates and we see splinted. So splint just meaning a thin strip of metal like that. So splints on the arms and legs and coats of plates, sections of metal plates riveted on the inside of a fabric or leather. And then the brigandine, and oh, I want a brigandine. That's future Lauren. Future Lauren's gonna look at getting the brigandine. Present day Lauren cannot afford to have a custom made brigandine. So that ain't gonna happen. But 
we don't see Step of Other as a development because we know there's queer bully or queer means leather and bully boy like we know that there's boiled leather, hardened leather plates that look like plate armor. We know that that comes up. There are references to that. We know that there are metal plates riveted to leather and fabric. We see that in our coat of plates. We see that in our 15th century brigandine. So in the 14th and 15th centuries, we do have armor development and there may have been some attempts and this is probably why we see it, but it's going to be studs and rows. When I attacked this with the messer and it was really tricky to do indoors, as you'll see, um, it snowed a little bit late last night. It kind of ruined my plan to go outside. It's gray, it's cloudy, it's not good weather. So we will make more of these. I made these myself so I can make more. We can revisit the experiment outdoors on a post. But really, thrusting, this did not do very well. This did better because if you hit the stud, you might get jammed in between two of them rather than just the glancing off of one and stabbing into the leather. Um, slashing, much better protection than this. You're bouncing off the studs and you're still clipping into the leather, whereas here, um, maybe if I had hit both of them on, but I can feel, yeah, I've cut into the studs, so you'd still need good, but it's going to still be very heavy because you're going to have to have solid metal studs in these big rows, it's going to be easier and probably better for the backing if you do them with the metal plates, the metal splints, and you have fewer rivets to hold it on. So fewer holes in the backing. Um, now these aren't, these are modern day, so they have the little claws that you push in and fold over. So that's a lot easier, but you can imagine having to punch a whole bunch of a hole for each one of these, you're going to really be taking away a lot of leather, riveting in, it's going to impact the structural integrity of the backing. So I can see why, instead of having this studded development, we really just go to splint and plate and yeah. And besides, if you have mail armor already, it's a lot easier to repair because you just take up the links. And if you're wearing your gambus and your padding underneath, it's already providing you with a lot of protection and all the layers of that. So maybe on arms, as they were experimenting, we have these examples where studs were used and riveted along, and then they just switched to splinting. But this awesome heavy metal look to bracers with all the studs like that. Not as effective. Get rid of that. No. Nope. So, in conclusion, if you're going to have a studded leather in your game, it's going to be rows of studs. That's actually going to work. So that's what we figured out today. I went into this saying, oh, I, uh, you know, I'm going to experiment and set aside any Oh, well, we don't have any historical examples, so it's going to be totally wasted. I made two designs, and we have one that actually protects really well. So we have an example of what studded leather could be based on the few historical surviving artifacts that look like that. They could have just been decorative armor. Um, we don't know if it was used in battle, but there we go. So if you're doing video games and role-playing games and you do want to have studded leather armor, you can have studs in rows close together to help trap and deflect the blade over several parts. It's going to work because that's the experiment worked. But every time we see that pattern of just adding studs to something, studs are decorative. They're not necessarily protective and you can cut between them when they're in those patterns. So that's the result of our experiment. It shows that studs in this pattern are pretty good. Studs in a more decorative floral patterns, not as effective and definitely bad against the thrust. Yeah, maybe I get my thrust in there, but if they are put a little bit closer together, it'd probably be more effective at trapping the blade not going through. And if you had a gambus and something padded underneath, even an army doublet, definitely offer more protection. So, stud leather, good work. If you have rows of studs rather than patterns of studs that are separate. So that's our experimental video on the controversy of studded leather. Um, 
do remember to like and subscribe, but most importantly, comment. You know, if you have some thoughts on this, how could we make studded leather work as an effective armor? Because if it's a fantasy game, I understand that it's not going to be medieval European history. You can have changes. You shouldn't just have medieval European stuff. You can have your own evolution and take on things. So if it's your fantasy setting, well, we could figure out a way to make it work. Anyway, that's my video today. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic today. A fantastic today, a fantastic tomorrow, a fantastic weekend and everything. And uh, take care, everyone. I'll see you again soon.